Weekend Review, good through October the 1st, 2017. Well, in for D70, we'll be back on Monday. Uh, a couple of apologies, first of all. On Wednesday, I recorded a nice recording all about the new tax proposals and everything else and the effect on the markets. And took four hours to try to get it fixed and rendered and posted, and it just would not do it. So it's taken me two days to get that all repaired. And then tonight, here on Friday, I have been recording for a... I did a 30-minute recording here for the weekend review, and it had no sound. So let's do it this time. Let's do it right. This is one frustrated presenter here, I'll tell you that right now. Anyway, let's get right to it. So in the weekend review, we're going to take a look at what happened on Friday, the daily charts. Then we're going to pull back, look what happened for the week. Then we're going to pull back and look at what happened for the month, now that this is the end of the month for trading. And we're going to pull back and look at what happened for the quarter here. Uh, and then I'll talk a little bit about my day trading chat room and how it might be a super opportunity for you to, if you can be in front of the markets for two hours a day. All right, let's get to the daily charts. What happened on Friday? Search of all, the SPY up at 0.35%. The Dow up at 0.1%. It just squeaked it out at the end there. And then we have the Qs. We're down up a 0.72, leading the markets up. And then we have the small caps up at uh, plus 0.24. And then all new all-time highs there. Uh, bank also up at 0.25. And then we have the VIX. Oh, man, the VIX is down 0 0.42, down to, look at that, 9.51. We'll let you see how that low that really is here when we take a look at the charts. And then we had uh, the dollar here was up just slightly. We had, actually, oil was even for the day, uh, but it had one terrific week. And then we had... Uh, Gold and silver were down just a little bit. Of course, the markets are up. The gold and silver tend to be down. And the trend right there at 0 0.99, almost perfectly dead even for uh, on Friday. All right, let's take a look here at the chart for the SPY. And here we are. Boom, boom, boom. Zoom. New all-time high here on the daily charts for the S&PY. And again, we've been basing up here for a while. We had a little warning and it made a little dip. And boom, we're right up there to new highs. Uh, let's take a look here at the Dow on the daily. And it too, uh, it's at a bull pullback and just came just short of being a new all-time high. Then we have the Qs here, which had pulled back, but pulled back more than the rest of the markets. And now they're starting to roll back up here not quite up to their their highs from before. So tech is lagging a little bit this particular week. We're talking about the daily charts, however. And look at this. Kaboom! What a week here for uh, the IWM, which is the small cap Russell uh, ETF. And look at that. Just keep running up new all-time highs for that one. Now, you have to look at the small caps here. As of the 1st of September, they were break even for the month right down here they were about break even and then for the year I mean and then look at that month it was one heck of a month here on the small caps why is that well the one of the main reasons is that with these tax proposals it's going to have the biggest effect on smaller cap stocks why the large caps they think will be have they already have a lower effective uh, uh, rate that they're paying on their taxes so lowering it to 20% will affect them probably they say about add about seven percent to their income but for the smaller caps who are playing a much higher effective yield much much bigger effect for them so let's take a look here at uh, uh, the uh, bank and sure bank boom 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 right near its all-time highs as well and then we've got uh, uh, the uh, the VIX and here it is on the daily chart look at this we used to think that at 12 it was low and now look at this down here 9.51 back here it closed at 9.36 the lowest ever recorded since they invented the VIX index so that's how low we are folks we are very very complacent in the market which means that people aren't worried about anything it's a pretty darn amazing given there all the geopolitical things that are going on and all the other uh, things that we have going on with our economy so but that's where people are sitting right now. So those are the daily charts. Let's go to the weekly charts here. And on the weekly S&P 500, we'll start out there. Here's the SPIY weekly. And uh, we do a bull pullback here on the weekly. And it's rising up. And then, boom, new all-time high here. And then we have the Dow here. 
the brick looks very similar. Bull pullback here, and then boom, boom, boom. We're all the way back up to new highs. Then we have the Qs on the. And now, if you remember last week in uh, Des's weekend video here, uh, he he was very concerned. He put a sell on it because it closed below the lower part of this rising wedge, which is a bearish formation, and. Sure enough, uh, it closed. It fell all the way down here to the 20 moving average, and then it came all the way back up and closed just above that line. So, we may be, we may have repaired ourselves here. Then the small cap Russell, nothing but on fire here. Look at that shot! Boom! Broke out of this upper resistance line on the weekly chart, closed just before it, above it last week, and now all the way up here, just on fire this week. That's for sure. And then again, bank here testing its all-time highs on the weekly chart. Uh, and again, it pulled back, was lagging the rest of the markets, and like with the Russell, and now boom, just taking off like that. And here's the VIX on the weekly, just to give you perspective. Again, if we go back in time here, you can see it was rarely below 12, rarely below 12, and now here, just in the last few months, we've been you know basing on 10. And actually, you know, squirting down here. These are weekly candles, pretty phenomenal. All right, let's go to the monthly. Now that we are at the end of the month, uh, let's go to the uh, monthly charts here. So now we go go to the SPY here on monthly, and look at this almost straight up, right? We did have a little sideways action here um, in uh, March and uh, April, and then it just been up, 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 and up here. Uh, some doji months, but uh, sure enough, we keep on climbing here. The Dow, uh, it's even straighter line up, a little bit faster. And then we have the uh, Qs here. Look at that. It actually turned red for the month. It actually had a lower close than the opening from last month. So uh, the Qs are down just slightly uh, for the f entire month. So as it's starting to high base there, have we had too big of a run here? Uh, that time will tell. Then we have a small cap Russell here again. It was in this rising wedge, and boom, it just busted right out from it. So, so, so much of that wedge is gone now, right? We've completely broken out of that right there. All right, that's it for the monthlies. All right, let's take a look at quarterly for just a minute here. And to do that, we're going to go to uh, finviz.com. Finviz.com. And, and, and a thing called groups. Now, there's the one day performance, but let's take a look here um, for the week here. Who were the biggest movers and who were the biggest uh, losers for the week, right? So, biggest movers were basic materials and financials, and technology were the biggest winners this week, uh, and with utilities and services uh, being those at you know, the bottom. But here's the monthly performance, what I want to focus on here. We close the month, right? So, again, we want to always pay attention to where is finance and where is tech, because they tend to lead the way uh, one way or the other. So here we have uh, basic materials that was, you know, things like oil. They are going to be, that really did uh, pop this month, and so it's up here at the top. But utilities, look at that, down, down, down on utilities, the more safe areas, right? Uh, and consumer goods, look at that, just about break even for the month. Again, these are as sectors, but, but unfortunately, technology is down here too. Uh, it's one of the lowest ones, and we want tech to be leading up there, to one of the stronger ones. And we have financials. Financials right in the middle here. So, yes, they've been on fire here, but uh, they're still not as much as the rest of the market, so they need to be catching up. And uh, uh, so that's where, we, that's where we can look at the monthly. And then for the last three months, which is the last quarter, here we have it. Here's our quarterly in the analysis. Basic materials, just a, a very, very strong. Technology, that's good there, right up there. Uh, that's very good on the quarterly basis. And the financings are right there, number four. So we're in good alignment for the quarter. And uh, we're just in fair alignment for the and we're not in as good as for the monthly performance because tech stocks have dropped down significantly here. All right, that's finviz.com. Now I'd like to talk to you about some of the things that I've been doing in my day trading chat room. And then after this, we'll go over several individual stocks on the Dow Jones Industrial Average and some of the tech stocks. So let me just show you what the results were for today in my day trading chat room. Again, the Grok day trading chat room, uh, we, we trade from uh, 9.30 to about 11.30 uh, each morning. That's Eastern Time. And uh, 
and I lead that room and make calls. Well, these are the calls that I made today, Friday, and uh, you can see um, I had uh, several winners today and just a couple of expense trades. In fact, uh, we had some pretty good results today. Look at this. We were 84% success rate. Our target is to have 60% success rate, which means we make money on 6 out of 10 trades. And uh, I had zero errors today. That's a, We're always tracking that as well. But our net for the day, because I was able to cut my losers short, I mean, I had, what, minus 0.4 and a minus 0.4, only two trades of expense, and they were minus 0.4. That's not much at all. Uh, the, the, we'd add this all up. The net of all of these was plus 12.85%. That's on return on risk. So what do we mean by that? If we have a model portfolio at $10,000, which means we're trading $10,000 on each trade, and we have a 1% stop, we risk $100 per trade. But for every 1% we make, we net, with it is a $100. So today, we made about $1,285 in our model portfolio. These are on the call trades. These, I'm, you know, as I call them, I put them up here, my exact entries, my exact exits. So we made about $1,200 today in the market. So that's the net. But what about for the week? Now, we have 5% per day is our target. And um, we exceeded our not only our target, but our stretch goal of 10%. We exceeded that today as well. But look at this. This is it for the week. So we have some good days. We have some bad ways. This was an exceptionally good week. I, I want to say that. We uh, were 11% on Monday, 11% on Tuesday, 3.7% on Wednesday. Okay. We only got 3.7%, $370 on our called trades. 7% uh, then on Thursday and then 12% today. So you add all of those up. Again, our target is 5% per day. It would be 25% net for the entire week and 50% for a stretch goal of 10% per day, right? And look at this. We were at 46.35% for the week net on our called trades. Well, what does that mean? That means we made about $4,600 this week on call trades if you're trading the model portfolio, $10,000 per trade. Wow, that's about $4,600 for the week. Now, think about this for a second. If you were to take and, and just trade that for 40 weeks in this year, and you had 40 weeks of, with that result, so times 40, that would be 185 thousand dollars income for the year that's working just 40 weeks taking three months off and only working two hours a day how would you like that for income well if you're at all interested and in, you can be in front of the markets for about two hours every day hey, you got to see our webinar on how to oh, let me go to grocktrade.com grocktrade.com and uh, when you get there, uh, right up here at the top, it says Day Trading Chat Room. And th there's a webinar. We're gonna, it's called How to Win a Day Trading. Uh, without buying expensive uh, education, it's going to take you years to learn. So just hit the Reserve Now button. But if you, before you do that, you want to read about the chat room, you can. Right down here, it tells you exactly what we do. Uh, we don't hide anything there. I know I'm completely transparent as far as that's concerned and uh, and you can just buy a, a regular membership if you'd like but if you go to that webinar there might be some special offers that you might want to be taking a look at there so uh, again uh, that's uh, grocktrade.com we'll go to the day trading chat room area and just click here and register for it we're doing a series of these this week so you be sure to join me there all right let's get back to some of this individual stocks first the Dow Jones industrial averages and then we'll take a look here at uh, at some of the tech stocks now um, in my first video that I recorded here if it took me 30 minutes I went through every one of them but I'm just going to jump over it and go do some different ones so let's get back to the daily chart here and um, of course um, we got Apple everybody wants to know about the Apple right well Des had made a call on that to sell it back here and then he cautioned that it might be ready to bounce here last week well it did bounce but take a look at this bounce it bounced up and out basing right on top of the 100 moving average but look at volume when it was falling big volume when it's popping up little tiny volume folks if you've been through our mentoring program you know what that means that means there's no support for this bounce up here that's very bearish. All right, let's take a look here at uh, at uh, Boeing. Uh, Boeing here, uh, 
is, is it was in a buy, it was high base in a long time, finally broke out, and Des was cautioning that it might be time to take some profits, and it just drifted back a little bit here um, uh, this uh, for this week here. Uh, let's take a look at Disney. Now, Disney had been a sell from all the way back here. It just crashed down and then crashed down, and it was coming up here, and Des saying, uh, caution, caution here. Um, uh, you know, he was a little concerned about it, uh, the way that it was breaking out here last Friday. Well, uh, to me, it's a bear flag, and it started to break down again. So it's, we're still in a sell mode on Disney. Then we got GE here. Again, I'm just going through these randomly, um, uh, not being able to hit them all. And on this one, Des had called a buy, but down here, and it was rising up. But again, I see that as a bear flag. And so now that has broken, and it stalled right here at the 50 moving average, and then bam, it fell down. So I have a sell on that one now. That's on GE. Uh, Goldman Sachs here uh, was a buy from down here, and it was stalling here. But then look at this high base breakout. Boom! Again, banks have been on fire. So uh, sure enough, Goldman Sachs is one of them banks, right? Uh, we have uh, Home Depot. It was a sell, and then it was a buy. And sure enough, it continued to run up this week. Beautiful. This is a beautiful, we call a bull pullback. Pulled right back to that 20 moving average, that red line right there. Gorgeous. No, I take that back. That's the 11 EMA. Gorgeous. And just ran right up from there. That is a very pretty trade right there. Uh, then we have J&J, &J, uh, Johnson & Johnson here. It was a sell here, and it just continued to run down. These are from Des's calls last week. And uh, J.P. Morgan as I buy from here and look at that ran up did another beautiful bull pullback right to the 8 EMA and then room so running on back up to new highs up there uh, coca-cola KO uh, it was a sell here it came down it was stalling Des was a little concerned that it stalled right here at the 50 moving average but then kabam look at that beautiful if you were short um, McDonald's MCD here it was a sell and then it was a buy and now well, this one didn't work out so well. It really crashed down during the week, bounced off the 100 moving average, right back up into the range there around the 50 moving average. Caught up in all the moving averages there. Really no direction in McDonald's right now. Uh, then we have uh, trip 3M, and uh, 3M here was uh, was a sell, and it came here just basing, 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 and then did fall down. He did caution that it might take a bounce here, and ended up just basing for a while and dropping just a little bit here. That was on 3M, MMM. And then we've got Merck here, sell. And, and, and sure enough, it just followed through for the rest of the week from his call last week there. Here's Nike, which has been a, it was a, uh, it was falling, falling, falling. And he called a buy on it. And uh, it was just basing here. He kept his buy last week, but I'm calling it a sell now. Why? Because it fell down here after earnings. And it's now doing a bear pullback. I'm calling that one now a sell on Nike. And we got uh, uh, Pfizer here. It was a buy. Zoom, 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 zoom. He cautioned that it might be a little topsy here at even dollar thirty-six, And I agreed with him there. And uh, it's doing a bull pullback here, though. So if you're in it, that's good. If you're, if you're, if you're, if you, um, if I were in it, I would have a stop right here about the uh, 20 moving average on that one right now. And then we've got the Procter & Gamble, which was a sell, and it, it did a little bit of bear pullback, and kabam, definitely selling. Now then, the market was up most of the week, right? Yet, we have uh, some of these big name ones there. These are the blue chip stocks. They're just moving on down. Uh, United Health here. Now, this is uh, the markings from the V newsletter. We were uh, this is a bullish one on our list, and for a couple of weeks we were calling a, a high base if it were break above $200. It, guess what? It never did. We never got filled on our long. Des called it a short right here, and it fell down, and now it's come back up a little bit, but again, caught up in all those moving averages. It could easily be a bear pullback. Uh, then we have United Technologies here. It was a buy here, and it's continued to run up, and it broke above the 200 moving average, and then fell back, and then end up closing staying above it here on Friday uh, but then we got uh, a Verizon here a buy and up here and just now just resting up here at its new altitude as I like to say Walmart um, was a buy and then he put a sell on it last week and then 
right to the 100 moving average area there, close just below it there. So that could be a real crack in the in the a real crack in the ice there. All right, and then uh, XOM here, um, it, it was a sell, and then I am now putting a buy on it. This ended up being just a bull pullback here. He thought it was going to be a reversal. He put it uh, last Friday. He put a sell on XOM uh, XM Mobile. I'm now putting a buy on that, and sure enough, boom, boom, boom. Now it's right to the 200 moving average possible area for it to stall. All right, let's take a look at just some of the tech stocks here um, that Desi covered last week. Um, and we already covered Apple. And um, so here is uh, uh, Alibaba and Alibaba here. This is again from the V newsletter I had in the video. This one happened to be in our bull list, very bullish fundamental, but it was in a rising wedge, which is a bearish formation. Now, uh, in there, I was telling, do not trade this to the long side. Well, Des had put a sell on it right here. Why did he do that? Well, it broke this rising wedge. He broke it, and then sure enough, bam, it did fall down here, uh, almost ten dollars. So. And now it could be this could be a bear pullback. Um, we have to keep an eye on that one, but definitely a sell there, and uh, and that's the reason why. Remember, he said there's a lot of things that he's not, you know, that he's taking into consideration. Well, I had this actually drawn in many of his charts. He did not have anything drawn in on. Uh, buy do here. It was high basing, high basing, high basing. It's been a buy from back here. Buy do, and kaboom! Look at that. Started to break out on Thursday and Friday. It was up uh, 2.6 percent there. Um, let's see here. Let's take a look at Facebook. Now, Facebook had an interesting week. Um, it was a buy. He was cautioning that it just was going nowhere. And sure enough, uh, on um, Monday, bam, down 4%. 4% drop. Ooh, doggy, that, that hurts. And, and what happened this week? It just came all the way back up about 5%. It ended up being positive for the week. So, um, you know. You never know what's going to happen, but that's a real pierce down here after being in this this really tight base all the way back here from mid-August to the end of September for six weeks. We've been in a tight range. Now we're back into that range again. So we're in consolidation when it comes to Facebook, and then we've got uh, Google, G O G, G O O G, in a symmetrical triangle. It's in a pie, but sure enough, boom! Look at that. That is like a perfect picture of it, the way that it breaks out and with increased volume. Google L, same thing, S um, symmetrical triangle, increased volume, boom, boom, and away it goes. GoPro had a really wild week here. Um, it, did, it was down over 4% just today. Now, we put a sell on it here. It did take off, and now just dropped right back down to the area it was last Friday. So, um, you know, that one uh, that just kind of went wacko this week. Uh, NVIDIA here. And, uh, uh, you know, it was up here and uh, high basing at all time highs, and then it starting to do a, a pull, but he put a sell on it and it just fell down here. And it's just not seemed to be going anywhere on low volume. Now it's on low volume as it bases down there. Oracle, it was a, he put a buy on it last Friday, and it just didn't go anywhere, just going sideways. PayPal, this is, this is one we've been in. In the V newsletter, several times back here, we were we made a call on it, and then currently, a lot of people are in this one. When it broke out here, then did a pullback right to that line of support, then took off again for highs. Now doing another bull pullback here. That's still on the buy side on PayPal. Red Hat here, um, Des had put a sell on it here, and then it had earnings. It popped up, but it's now doing a bull pullback and ready to go higher. I'm now putting a call to for a buy on Red Hat now after its earnings and doing this bull pullback with uh, uh, after that's all finished there. A snap uh, has been uh, ran up. We put a sell on it. Bam, bam, bam. Now then it, it did go down one more day, and now it's starting to return back up, and it's up, getting above the moving averages here. Hmm, this one could be a call for uh, long here, but uh, I, I just I keep an eye on that one. Last one then is Twitter. Uh, Des had a buy on this one. He kept his buy last week, but now it's broken below the 200 moving average and staying below it. I'm putting a sell on Twitter. Well, that's it for this week. Um, 
And again, Des will be back on Monday. And sorry about all my technical issues that I've had this week and didn't wasn't able to post more of my videos. But uh, just remember this: uh, I want you to trade well and let your winners run. Yeah.